There are two types of robots. The back office robot can be autonomous, meaning it can run independently in the back office while getting an input from a person. The other robot is user assisted. The automation will only run when certain events or user actions have been triggered. This is what we're going to talk about in this video. In this video, I will introduce you to user events and user assisted automation in UAPath. This is a very common use case in call centers. Robots have been assembled to automate elements based on what a call center agents do with their desktop tools. Imagine when the agent submits a form in his desktop, the data is scraped by a robot and sent to a web service or inserted in another legacy application automatically. So how are these robots are getting triggered? In many cases, once a robot is activated, it stays in the background and listens for a specific user actions like pressing a key combination or mouse clicking on certain images or UA elements. When a user performs such actions, the robot comes into play and executes the commands it was designed for. In UAPath, we have three main types of user events. We use system events to monitor the entire system for keyboard inputs and mouse clicks. Element-related events. We use them in business processes for which we monitor an action on a specific element. Events on specific images. We use them in business process improvement automations where we cannot identify elements on screen, like in Citrix or remote desktop environment. In this case, monitoring is restricted to the clicks on the chosen image. So let's dive in with a quick example of possible user events. After watching this video, you should know how to work with system key press events, system mouse click events, element mouse click events, element key press events, and image click events. Let's create a new workflow by going to the start menu. Now, we have this pretty fine workflow that is ready for you to use for a specific purpose. Let's click on agent process improvement. Let's put in the name of this workflow. This will automatically set up this agent assistant robot. As you can see, some activities has been set up here already. This is the structure of the agent assistant in UiPath. First, we have the triggers which are indicated by these three activities. A click trigger, a key press, and hotkeys. Down here is the event handler where the activities are being executed once a certain key has been activated. Okay, let me delete this sequence and we'll do it manually so you'll better understand how the process works. Let's see how the system key press event works. Let's click on user events, then select monitor keyboard. Let's type in M and tick on the Alt key. So when we call the robot, it will listen to the entire system for the Alt M keys combination. Once a user press Alt M, the trigger will be activated and the robot will go on to perform the event handler activities. To see that the trigger is working, let's add a message box in the event handler. This message box will display you have pressed Alt M, the trigger has been executed, when Alt M has been performed. Let's click the run button. Okay, now let's press Alt-M. There, as you can see, our automation is working correctly. Now, we have to stop the execution manually because the monitor event's activity is set to run forever as default. This is normal if, say, you have set up a permanent actionable items when a certain key is triggered on a machine. Let's go to the Execute tab and click Stop. Let's click the monitor event. In the Properties tab, we can set the Repeat Forever option to False. This will only run once, after which the robot will exit its listening mode. What if we wanted to stop the robot once it reaches a certain number of repetition? Here's how we do this. Let's create a repeat count variable, which will increase every time a user press Alt M. The type should be an integer and the scope should cover the entire recording sequence. We will increase its value using an assigned activity inside the event handler.
we can concatenate the number in our message to show that it's working by adding a plus sign in the variable repeat count. One last thing, in the monitor events we set the repeat count, repeat count is less than the 3 condition to the repeat forever argument. Meaning, the trigger will keep on listening it and execute the handles until the hotkey has been pressed 3 times. Then it will stop the automation. Ok, let's test it. I will now press Alt M. Ok, that's the first one. Press it again. That's two. Then third. Now it ends the automation. Perfect. Now that we know how to set up trigger using keyboard inputs, let's now set up a trigger for a mouse event. First, let me remove the loop that we have set up. Then we can put monitor events option to false so we can set it up to repeat once. Now we'll set a mouse trigger activity. As you can see, I can add another trigger alongside with an existing trigger. So that means you can add multiple triggers into one handle. So once a user performs any of these triggers, the handle will be executed. Let's leave it as button left, that means it's a left mouse click. Let's remove this text from our message box since we will be using a mouse click. Ok, let's test it. I can click anywhere on the screen and here's our message. If we want our trigger to be executed only with a certain application, we can use the element trigger. Ok, let's clean this up by removing the previous triggers. Let me use this sample application to demonstrate how this works. The element trigger will work to any applications. This is where the agent assisted automation is being used most often. Now let's add a click trigger. We can then indicate an element on the screen. Let's select the accept button. What it will do is to execute the handle once the accept button is clicked. This screen image is recognized by UiPath using this predefined selectors. This makes it a lot faster for the scraping engine to recognize the element on the screen. Let's run our workflow. Our trigger is now in monitoring mode. Let's click the accept button. Sure enough, it executed a command. We can develop an agent assisted automation in order to capture the data the user has filled in from the application forms or any input fields. This is done by adding activities that can get the text from the text fields which are being processed in the event handler. Let's say we want to capture the value filled in by the user in the on as check field of this basic application. Now let's add this activity get visible text activity. Let's indicate the check on us field in the application. Next is we have to set up a variable we can use to pass on values of the text. Let's pull up the expression editor by clicking this button. Now we can right click on it and select create variable. Let's name it var check on us. Ok, let's set the message box to preview the value of our variable. Then, since we are setting up this capture activity in the event handler, it is important to take note that we need to capture the data from this field before the application processes an action after clicking the accept button. If the accept button has been executed first, we won't be able to capture the text in the check on us field because it will clear up the field for a new entry. So what we need to do is to set the event type property of the click trigger to synchronous. This way we will get the field value before any actions is performed. Let's run it and see how it works. Now the robot is in listening mode. 
let's type some values in these fields. Let's click the accept button. So there's the text captured by our trigger. Awesome! The synchronous event type can also be correlated with block event property. This provides you the option to block the execution of an application. Let's take the block event property of the click trigger. Now, let's go ahead and run the workflow. Notice the transaction number, it's currently at 873266. Normally, the number will increment by 1 without the block event. Let's put in some values and click the accept button. There, as you can see, we were able to click the button but the click event wasn't executed. Thus, the number stays the same. This is useful if you want to set up a final validation step before any data is submitted and processed by the application. You can choose to send a click to the application if the user entered valid data by adding a replay user event activity inside the event handler. So again, this block event option can only be used when using synchronous as your event type. You can leave the event type to be asynchronous when you want the action of the user to reach the control before the activities in the event handler are executed. A typical scenario is when you want a workflow to capture the response of the application regarding the submitted data. The event type and block event options are available for all element triggers and image triggers. We can also monitor key actions on different controls. For this, we will delete the click trigger and add key press trigger. Now, we can specify an input field where we want to apply the trigger. In this case, we'll set up the honest check field. For the hot keys, let's select control and the letter A. So once control A is pressed, this will process the event. Let's run it. Let's add some data in these input fields. If we double click on this field, nothing will happen. Now let's try control A. There it is. The robot responds to control A key combination. Then it returns a value in the message box. Finally, let's delete the key press trigger from the current workflow and replace it with a click image trigger. Now, let's indicate the area where we will perform the click. Let's test it with enable training tip from our application. So we can just drag and drop this rectangle to specify the area. The trigger will be executed once the user click within this indicated area. Let's run it and put some data in our input fields. Now, let's click on Enable Training Tip. There is our message box. This is how easy it is to set up your robot to respond from clicking an image in a local application. Same thing can be applied with Citrix or Virtual Desktop Environment. To recap, you can create robots that run through user commands anytime during their work. These robots act as virtual assistants, running in the background and waiting for a command from the human user. These commands can be in the form of keyboard inputs or mouse clicks. They can run within the system or with a certain application. Once the robot is triggered, it can perform a whole series of complicated tasks. In this video, we've covered how to design a robot to monitor and respond to certain user events. Here are some of the things that you've learned from this video. System key press and mouse click events, element mouse and key press events, image click events, we also covered setting up a user-assisted event triggers and handlers, setting up how to stop the triggers from doing actions. We've covered synchronous and asynchronous event type, how to use block event and replay user event, how to capture user input data. That was all for now. See you in the next video.